Okay, we're gonna move quickly through this video. I just wanted to show you, we're not gonna cut or edit or change anything in this video. You can see something will be moving in the frame the entire time. Just to give you an illustration of keying this cylinder with the pins, putting it into the housing, putting it into our practice stand and showing you the leashes at work. We've had some commenters, healthy skepticism, saying that we're zero bidding these locks, which is basically when you take the key pins inside of the lock, you make them all the same height, usually a zero depth pin. That way, if you put anything in there, lock pick, stick, rake, whatever, pull it backward, it'll open the lock almost instantaneously. That doesn't matter on the leashies. We'll get into that once we have everything assembled and I'll show you why the bidding doesn't really matter for the leashy pick. So starting off, we have the lock cylinder here, the cylinder housing, which you'll be familiar with as what is on the door. I've got pins, sorry, driver pins here, springs, key pins, the key, little retainer plate, and the screw that holds the cylinder into the housing. So first off, let's talk about the key. Here's the key. You can see that it's cut at different depths. And for the curious, it's actually cut at seven, four, six, three, and two. So if you were to take that to a hardware store, you could get that combination cut and the key would look just like this. This is the SC1 keyway, that's the cylinder. And you can see the pins here are cut at all different depths. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the key pins in. And apologies for not cutting or speeding this up, but in order to have definitive proof that the end cylinder isn't oddly bitted, we're gonna have to show this in its entirety. So feel free to skip forward if you like, but we will not be cutting. Now we're going to put the driver pins in and the key pin combined with the driver pin is what creates the shear line and allows the lock to turn. That's how a pin and tumbler lock works on pretty much all of them. So if you do this as a hobby or you get into this as a hobby, the biggest recommendation I can show at this point is check the key, make sure it spins. Because if you did it backwards or you didn't do it correctly, the worst time to find out is when you've got it all installed and screwed down. Unless you just like taking things apart. And I'm adding the springs here. And we're going to add this retaining plate. This may take a little bit because these can be tricky and I can't move it away to get a good angle on it. Because once again, the no cut rule. Hmm? Okay, that's in. One more time just to double check for sanity. Yes, it spins. Now we're going to install this cylinder into the housing here. And we're going to take this screw that retains that. Screw that down. Fortunately, the screwdriver is slightly magnetized. If you guessed we were going to check it again, you're right. All right. So now we're going to pan the camera up awkwardly because we can't cut. And I'm going to keep the cylinder in view the entire time. Magic. All right. So what we have here is a practice station that we made. It's got a deadbolt piece in the middle here. We're going to take the cylinder, insert it into the deadbolt area. And I'm going to do a quick check to make sure it spins. Now we're going to turn this around and we're going to put the plate on here and the back screws in. This is the part that will probably take the longest. So if you have a book or magazine or something you'd like to read, this would be the time to get that out. And don't tighten that down all the way until you get this other one almost all the way in because sometimes they can need little micro adjustments 
and you want to wait to do that at the very end. Okay, so everything looks level and set. We're going to screw that down. And we'll tighten the other one. Now we're going to check the deadbolt. Okay, it works standard. Now we're going to switch sides to do this leashy demo. I'm going to keep my hand in the frame so there's no cuts, no funny business, no changes. I've got the key here, which you can see is differently cut. It's not zero bitted. I'm going to insert the key, turn it, opens the lock. So we've locked this and pull the key out. Now we're going to bring the leashy into play. So we're finally at the point where we can talk about the leashy pick and why the bidding doesn't matter on this lock. The way that you pick with the leashy, the way you should pick, is you use this to push down on each of the stacks until you get a brake noise or a little pop, which you'll hear just in a minute. First, before we start, we'll try to turn this. It doesn't turn. If this was zero bitted at that height, this would turn immediately. So we're gonna apply tension here, and on the first stack, I'm just going to push this down until I hear a little click. Okay, that was the first click. Now I'm going to move to the second stack and see if I can get a click. If I can't get a click, I'll just move to the third until I can get a click. And I'm going to keep going. And now I'll come back to the two. Keep going on each stack until I feel those little breaks. I just go sequentially back and forth on each one until... I get a turn and you saw it maybe we'll see I turn up and that opens and so the reason is I had to come back to that first pin and push down probably because as we know the bidding combination that's the longest pin now the thing on the leashes is they're much faster if you just get used to it and start doing that from the beginning now it's open well, we were going the wrong way. Sorry, we'll lock it and do it again. So we'll insert and we'll go quick on this one. Let's get it all the way in. Locked in. Open. So you can see with the leashy, the bidding depth doesn't really matter. It is all about probing each of the stacks until you get that push. And in fact, we'll go the opposite way so I can show you a different tension to show you how it works there too. So we'll start on the one, go to the two, three, four, five. I haven't gotten any binding yet. So we wanna keep going till we feel binding. Sometimes you need to reset. Just keep slowly working at it. And the strength of the leashy pick isn't the speed. They are fast. The strength of the leashy pick is the repeatability. Oh, got a bind there. Okay, so that opens. So it's not necessarily the speed of the pick so much as it is, I wouldn't say it's a guaranteed pick. It always depends on the locks and the internals, but it's much more of a guarantee than single pin picking or bumping. A lot of people say that bumping's faster. Yes, but it's not as repeatable as these. So let's do one more where we insert and go quick. and open. So hopefully that shows that this is not zero bitted. This is that combination. Once again, 74632. That's the Leashy SC1 pick. We also make them for the quick set. And so you can check out store.itstactical.com to get yours today.